Welcome back to Let's Play Hand of Fate. We've gotten a third item of power from the mysterious dealer in front of us. How empty my cabinet looks now. Let's show that off briefly. After the Queen of Dust, we got the Goblet. The Jack of Scales gave us the Scepter. And the King of Skulls gave us the Pentacle. But we're not going to go with the Queen of Scales quite yet. So this time, we're back in Endless Mode to try and do some more card unlocks and to show off another fate that I won't show off in the main story mode. We're done with the Nomad. And I thought I'd show off Hoarder's Desire. It's not so much a difficulty change per se as it's just a rule change. More spare equipment is just better in all senses. I'm going to try and accumulate as much equipment as possible and, where possible, show it off. Since I haven't been able to show off all equipment, probably won't have the occasion to, and at least I want to show some of the effect. It's been piling up on us. Let's go. What brings you to play the game? Ha, I know you will not tell me. Like all the rest, you are silent. Now that we have the pentacle, some things have changed in our starting inventory, and since it's gotten a little bit more extensive, let's show off what we've got. We've got an axe, pretty simple, and a shield. We have three rings. The ring of hindsight we already had. Merchant's ring is pretty nice, revealing shops like that. And Ring of Justice. Well, it could be useful. Um, it could keep us alive. We'll see if it does. Hoarder's Desire Helm wasn't explicitly mentioned by the Fate, but increased damage against Goblin and increased spoils when they're around could very well uh, happen, since we did in fact unlock the Goblin's encounter and it was locked to our deck. Finally, we also get a random blessing. Headman's blessing could be good. The best weapons we have aren't necessarily axes, but we'll see what happens. In any event, maybe I can start another blessing stack. You also notice we start with a paltry 40 health. Some of the fates do that, and Hoarder's Desire will do that, because otherwise, well, what would you have to look forward to by hoarding equipment? Let's start off right off the bat. Let's try left. I'm sure you are grateful for that. Oops. Well, one thing that's that you might have noticed is that the button here at the bottom is uh, not necessarily the place you need to click. You can click anywhere on the interface and the encounter will continue. I wanted to put these on top and I wanted to show off the Skeleton King shield but I misclicked. I don't actually know where it went by default. Hopefully I can uh, make up for it later. Either way, we'll have equipment. I would have preferred to pick it up though. I don't care about a merchant's favor quite yet, and I don't want to go through the Devil's Carnival, 
So far, so good. Huh. Did you expect me to tell your fortune? No. A fortune teller. So far. Five health loss is nothing. Believe their own lies. Of course, I am different. My powers are genuine. Although I'm speeding up or cutting a bunch of fights in this dungeon, there are still new environments we haven't seen before. This is one of them. It's uh, pretty neat. Uh, and there you get to see the Ratman's Leap that I momentarily forgot about. They can come at you quite faster and you can still dodge it, but it's not pleasant. And although I said that ring that would heal me with the uh, axe kills wouldn't be that useful, that also didn't dawn on me at the time. I'm gonna get hit in the first few levels. Still no gain from the Ratmen. They're annoying. Choose from these options. One interesting note that was mentioned in the thread, that when you get the treasure chest, there is a way to tell whether it's a mimic or not. Ultimately, it's the lock. If the treasure chest has a lock on it, then it's safe. And if it doesn't, you're dealing with the mimic. And in this Let's Play, I was uh, oddly fortunate enough that I never actually got the treasure chest token before encountering the mimic. And the dealer did not pick up a token from his box to give me. And that's also a small sign. Usually you unlock the treasure chest early though. So I could leave it alone, but we're safe here. Fling your opponent's challenges back in their faces. Excellent. Our health gain starts. Dang. No, I want to visit the rest of this map. If I can get Metal Ore and Holy Forge taken care of and show that off, that would be beautiful. And goblins are a pain. But we have a helm for dealing with goblins. But Apprentice... Apprentice is not necessarily a great card to have here. We're going to turn back for now. And I want to show the rest of the map. A portal and a wizard, or at least an apprentice. It reminds me of days past. Teleportation spell will bring us to a next floor. I do want that token, but we can wait. Right now we're in unlock mode and I can always get the apprentice later. Also, I want resources. 
If the apprentice saw that we were wearing a particular helm, the encounter would change a bit. Not the day, Apprentice. I do wonder how much time you spend simply chasing down blind alleys. Hey now. You set up this card game. So careless with your resources. Goblins. Goblins are annoying, and we get to see them for real on the map. Now, I did mention this, and someone in the thread reminded me that Goblins was a card you could encounter before the DLC, but after DLC was released, they became unlocked as part of the uh, Goblin, Goblin King's Hall's quest chain. As you plunder the secrets of your memories, you'll gain new cards. Some you'll wish you'd left untouched. Goblins take your stuff, and they are also a special suit. <laughs> they will also run away. They are hard to finish. You want to hit them to get your stuff back. Okay, we got this one. We want to hurry. Because what they don't tell you the first time you do this encounter is that this encounter is on a timer. At some point, one goblin will ring a horn. And when that happens, they will start teleporting out of the map. You can still kill them when the teleporter, the portal appears, but you want to get rid of them fast. Get your gold back, beat it out of them, and just deal with the guys. Oh, Mr. Lionel. Whatever will we do about you? At least we've dealt with this encounter and gotten some food out of it. At their heart, all games are about power, are they not? The acquiring of power, the retaining of power, and most importantly, the use of power. Okay, what do we got here? Plunder's Ring will help me a lot if I want to get a lot of games. What will we'll grab do that. that? Arrow cutter, not yet. I still want food. So yeah, unfortunately, rings don't give you health. Also because you can always wear as many rings as you want. It would be a little bit broken otherwise. So often, this is how the story ends, is it not? 
The hero tries, the hero dies. Their memory is celebrated, but they are lost. We could take these and give them a shot. Let's not equip them yet. Are you sure that's the right approach? More than anything, Ooh. I am proud of my array of curses. Losing 50% max health. Yeah. At this part of the run, I would love to show them off. And you see, they're pretty nice weapons. But I also have limited health and I want to keep going on this track. So let's get some gains out of it. A hero whose end has not been thus. Toxic blood. Holy touch. Okay, so we've got some protection against things damaging us. And I could use blessings, actually. The Maiden. I think we will ask for... Oh, actually, I could do health. No, supplies. Nope, not enough for loans. We'll just move on. Ah, that is one of my favorites. Tainted could be so much worse if we weren't trying to hoard every single bit of equipment possible. Do you understand what it is we do now? Or did I rush you through the rules, pushing you into the play before you were prepared? Uh, cursed treasure. I did not want to do this during the main run, but we're going to do that here. We really, really want it. And it's going to hurt. You're going to see why. There is a chance that this encounter will go differently. Either you lose all your blessings, or you may get some stuff, and the token, and a whole lot of curses. Sadly, this was not meant to be. Let us stake a token on their foolishness. We had this before. The High Binder. Interesting. Picking up the ore has given us a chance to pay one iron ore. I haven't had the chance to actually test the metal ore giving you iron ore when you're not in the Iron Mouse fate. But we want to continue, so let's pay an iron ore. With any luck, the Holy Forge card will still be available. Taverns, caves, dungeons, and the roads between them. Over and over, again and again. No. I don't want to... No wager right now. See, that's already better. Warcry we haven't had a chance to use before. And the Nomadic Helm 
actually is better. This is one of the few times I might want to wear it. Oh, wait, no. No unequipped items. Uh, this is actually useless. Disregard what I just said, because we want to have as many unequipped items as possible. It'll just be part of our stash. And of course, we got the Nomadic Helm from uh, beating the Nomad Fate. What have you got for me this time? Still nothing. Well, the shop will not be there yet. Sorry. The shop will be there for a while, so let's go the other ways. Reset the board each time. One has to wonder how it is possible to truly lose. Will we descend? Of course we are going to descend. I am more and more grateful that... Oh no, my blessings are gone. Well, not as good as I was expecting. See, it's... I'm, I'm not the best player at this. It is hard to uh, no longer keep track of certain things. It's hard to keep track of certain things from time to time, especially as you go down levels. You lose track of how many blessings you had, but oh. So right now I am in a pretty big combat with just a relatively basic weapon. So just gonna use the war cry. Warcry will leave this aura around us, you can see. And we are, in fact, uh, doing pretty damaging non-basic attacks as we move around. They can be sometimes a little bit slower, but all it's a pretty good deal. Anyhow, you've seen it. You know what the uh, hell suit looks like. Their attacks don't vary, so let's go a little faster. Yeah, I, at the beginning of the combat, I was somehow thinking that what gave me health after killing an enemy with an axe was a ring, but no, it was one of her blessings. Gone. Ah, not yet. Not yet. Nope. I do not care. I do not care about the Dark Dweller. And I don't really have a good weapon to give the Noble Trader. Except my regular axe, so I think we're good for now. Sail away and see what you will find. All the world is a game board, and us men and women merely players. I alone do not play. I maintain the rules. You have choices, and I have predestination. Your maze of Traps so is another goblin maze. That which you already know. We could leave it, but we are greedy adventurers, and of course we want that token. So let's see if we can not only find the wealth of the Goblin King, but his treasure. The token requires us to find a treasure chest in here. 
We can find other things. We just won't get the best reward. Already we're being tempted with a whole lot of gold here. Which is good for us. We're gonna to want to come to a shop. Treasure chest was right here. And you might notice the camera wasn't doing us any favors. If you go on automatic and just move up here, well, you'll have done this not for nothing, but you'll miss out on the best part of the reward. Oh, this is getting a little dicey here. There were a whole lot of things blocked off in the back, but you know what? We did well. We not only have the game cards, but we have the token. I'm sure you are grateful for that. Ah, some things I wanted to show off. Excellent. Mithril. Armor like this was exotic in my day. I imagine it is positively unheard of in yours. Mithril is kind of what you might expect it to be. If you know Mithril from, say, The Lord of the Rings, it's fantastically defensive armor with no speed penalty. And the Skeleton King Helm. Revenge is the sweetest satisfaction, don't you find? is a revenge item. I get hit, but I don't like getting hit. I think rather Mithril is probably the best choice here. Immaculate metal and work to perfection. A fine garb indeed. Fire relates to pure will in our system. In this case, however, Inferno Potion is one I haven't had the chance to play with, but Fire Form could be very damaging. And Angel's Wing would give us more mobility in combat, but we just increased our mobility. Let's try Inferno Potion. I remain amazed at the power you have touched in your life. As long as you don't get hurt, the Maze of Traps could give you very good results. If you possessed more subtlety, perhaps you could heal such rifts. That's not the life you have lived, mind. I could confront the husband. Oh, boo. Ouch. It's not our problem. Perhaps this will be the end of your road. Devil's Wager. <laughs> okay. This is time to show it off. I don't have the best equipment in the world, but I don't have the worst equipment either. We need to avoid getting hit in this fight. A lot. And this is what the Devil's Wager does. It reduces us to very low health. Now, what the Devil doesn't tell us here is that you don't have to take no hits. I have done the Devil's Wager and gotten hit once. But you're just avoiding death, really. But you do absolutely need to do this to get the token, and otherwise it will just sit there taunting you in the unused cards of your encounter deck. So, let's use our fire form. I don't like ranged attackers, 
and I don't like dodging them. I don't like reflecting them. But I think having fire form right now is going to help me pick them off a little faster. Fuck. Scales are quite possibly one of the worst things to have here because they have really annoying shields. They have... They're unblockable attacks. Ah, oh, and I'm not really always the best at dodging them. And right now, I was just saved by a crate in the way. So yeah, as you can see, fire form will not outright cause damage just by being around people. Instead, it just lights them on fire when you hit them. But honestly, that's really good by itself. Inferno Potion was a very good call. If you're good at fighting, this is not a bad encounter. Consider it. If you're concerned about your fighting performance or you don't have a way of healing yourself during combat and you don't like your odds, then just don't. I'll check something quick. Shields are here, rings are here. Inferno potion I want to keep. We'll go back to Warcry for now. Ah, uh, Golem Hunting Party. I do want to go back for that. Will you undo the damage you have done? Sure, why not? This is exactly what it says. If you looked in our deck before starting the session, you'll notice we have three of these cards locked, and they will take the place of other encounters, so we want to get rid of them. The Earth comes to life, animated by its desire to respond to the threats of man. Well, man will attack right back. No bad pre-battle uh, effect. That's good. Hopefully we'll get them three times this session, and if we do, we're golden. Now there are two of them. They're a little bit more annoying to deal with. But if you remember this map, this is the trap map. And this is the reason why I wanted to show, off, show it off in the LP the first time, because I remembered there being traps here, and you can lure them into the traps, as I'm kind of doing here. Really, it's just kind of funny to do so. The pathfinding in this game is fairly simple, and I think it doesn't need to be anything more than that. Come on. Before I start fighting you more earnestly. Ooh, almost got hit there. But I think I've had enough. Ouch. Come on. The one downside of Warcry is that your most damaging attacks come out slowly. But on the other hand, thanks to traps and high damage, we had a reasonably easy time. And although I kind of got hit from the attacks that tracked us, we're not doing badly. One. 
One more trap, just for good measure. You might want to resist the temptation of attacking them on the bridge, though, if you can lure them to a safer area. Just because you saw I had the difficulty in getting them out of the way. In, sorry, in getting out of their way. And also, don't stand here like I just did. It makes it slightly harder to see their attacks. Right here is actually pretty good. Then, that is the danger with the lava golems. They can be very easy if you're very consistent and know when to dodge and dodge at the right times. And if you make one little slip up, it's a little harder. This little token here is a food, food token. A couple encounters, we'll just leave it on the map for you to take. Oh. And it was not worth... Because I just spent six total and I got five out of it, but... Lesson learned. What have you got for me this time? Ah, the freebie, Deadly Traps. I worked long and hard to make that particularly painful. Ingenious, don't you think? Every one of them with their own monument to passing. Quite poignant, really. This is the unpleasant outcome of the old graveyard. I wish we had our blessings, but sadly we have curses. Bargain with the devil and the devil returns for more. No surprises there. Sadly, a lack of blessings also prevents us from continuing the demon trader quest. Time to take stock. Food again. And now we have more things. Huge hammer or desperate measure. We could also do feathered ice, but I think it's time to up our damage a little Sometimes bit. Sometimes form follows function and vice versa. In this case, it's called a huge hammer. You take a guess. I'm hoping I'll be mobile enough with the Mithril that the hammer won't be too much of an impediment. We have an artifact. I don't really want to deal with them. But unfortunately, choosing not to deal with them leads to a curse. I hope that is the curse that ends your quest. Well, I'm glad I get to show this off, but this is going to be very, very painful. I want to remove this curse because I actually have some really nice rings. Let's show it off again. Ring of Hindsight is nice. Merchant's Ring is kind of nice. Ring of Justice, I actually haven't used. Blunderer's Ring is uh, slow grow. I have a feeling we're going to start losing all our rings. I will happily wager on the outcome. I do not think you have what it takes. Come on. Wandering... Wandering has to work at some point. That's what I was hoping for. Wandering aimlessly in a huge success gives you food. 
and the huge success on either of your choice gives you the token. I feel like this is finally putting the nomad fate to rest. Yep, I don't care about marketplace right now. Nothing more pleasing than the smell of salt water and the rush of wind, is there? I appreciate your ingenuity. I look forward to seeing how you approach this particular challenge. Shop up there. That's not so great. But they this only because you have so inspired them is necessary. It'll get rid of our rings, but I don't think I have a choice here. I'd rather just get rid of them and deal with the loss of rings. Warcry is more useful than I expected. And I would love to use the huge hammer ability, but I don't really feel like activating a curse. Oh, Mr. Lionel, you're back. You're back. I don't want you to take random things, but hopefully my food will satisfy you. That was absolutely awful. But that's the game. You play with the goblins and that's what you get. Who can resist the cries of a damsel in distress? Will you brave the pirates for the sake of this fair maiden? Cave rescue. Perhaps this time you will best your intellectual superiors. Occasionally, brawn may defeat brains. His little quote there is actually very relevant. There are two ways of dealing with this. I could attack the pirates and get some gain cards and acquire the cards token. But I might be able to get by with negotiating them. Negotiating with them. I want to avoid combat right now. A choice. Select your desire. Of course, only one will really do, but it's not this. So either way, we need to fight. That's what the first uh, choice will do. You can attack them and they will fight. You can also just try to negotiate and you will get a good outcome. But this is a lot of mages. I am very glad that there is a combat queue in this game. Oh, but already you're seeing something here. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. This is the try attack I was mentioning. Two of them lined up here. And they started forming a more complex pattern. Just one does these three lines. Maybe we'll see three of them. Nope, still just one. Uh, he's setting up the book on the ground. That's the sign. And this is the three-prong attack. They get their most complex design. 
which is makes it very easy to just find yourself trapped. Since this fight is a little bit tedious, I'll go ahead and skip the rest. Goodbye, Plunderer's Ring. At the very least, if the combat ends, you do get the token. It's possible to get more gain cards than we got here. But this is not the worst outcome ever. Not yet. I want to see if I'm lucky here. That's what I was after. I thought I tracked that better. Alas, it's not to be. So I'll need food, but let me just see here. Thunderstrike we haven't seen yet and lightning damage could be absolutely fantastic. I want to show this off if I ever get the chance. Of course, the gold I just lost is exactly what I needed. I'm sure you are grateful for that. We're still alive, but this run is certainly going a little differently than our last endless run. Oh, and we could have gotten the gold too. An expedition. Press on. Your currency is spent, your memories tattered and torn, formed into mere cards for us to play with. It's a good thing this fate increases combat damage as well as health, because our health is not looking great. So you spent time with the druids after all. Why, yes, I did. The sacred stones at midday on the summer solstice, like they asked. It's a quest. You might not understand it. Summer solstice is more fighting. Briefly, Warcry is okay. I'm trying to use it. But again, the most damaging attacks are the slowest to come out, and with a slow weapon, Warcry has lost a little bit of its effectiveness. It allows enemies to get out of the way, which is not a lot of fun. So be careful about using Warcry if you're using a hammer or a mace. One thing I'm noticing as well is that the combat queue is changing a little bit with certain abilities. I would really like to get an answer from the developers if they could tell me how the combat queue works since it's one of the more interesting parts of the game for me.
our King of Dust again returns, with his companions by his side. Again, the King of Dust comes back. He just, he refuses to die. Fortunately, bandits, even upgraded as they are, are not too dangerous. The king is the one I'm most worried about because I am so slow. Even though he is fantastic for dealing friendly fire damage. I would love the hag's wraps right around now. Cannot stay away, eh? This token will unlock more cards if you can defeat this encounter. We don't have enough blood to bid. As he says, we need at least 60. Still no curse removal. And of course, here are the hag's wraps, and I can't sell anything. Unfortunate. got back in the deck. Another curse on the table. Let us see how you deal with it. Oh, this is cruel. Hello. I'm I'm just about to play with fire. We've unlocked a few things. I'm at a point where I'm satisfied enough with this run that we're just going to have a look at everything. Get extra equipment. For bludgeoning the undead. Interesting. This could work. It could also be horrible. Field of poppies might actually end up being useful, and we don't know what that is. So we're going to go down this way. This is what comes from interfering. We've already dealt with the bard. We don't really want anything from him. Instead, we want to kill these. There's a token in it for you if you win.
With this, we've defeated three golem hunting parties. They are no longer locked to our deck. You will probably still see them in endless mode, though. If you gain health, then I work harder to take it. The deeper you go, the greater the risk of starvation. Rapman hunting. My hope is that this sea voyage got very close. But I think we're five encounters from death. But perhaps we'll be lucky and get some game cards here. Let's give this a shot. We're set up for skeletons. Makes sense, really. than you usually see together. And with an artifact unused, perhaps that might have saved you. Your weapon has powers, yet you haven't used them. And now you're dead. That might be because of the curses I had. Though it's true I didn't have any food. I could have used the weapon ability. I could have kept track of a couple chance cards better. Um, the mace was not the worst idea to increase my damage, but you can see it slowed me down and made me take more damage than I'd like. And unfortunately, refusing to deal with some encounters left me even more in pain. This is one of the reasons why it's important to choose your deck if you really want to optimize your story, uh, your story dungeons. I don't think it's a huge deal either way. If you know how to deal with an encounter, you can deal with it on future encounters. Just be a little mindful of how it works and don't necessarily be like me. But for the sake of showing it off for the LP, hey, this is a pretty good run. We got down far enough and we've got a whole bunch of tokens here. Yeah, more goblins are, are on the way.
with another endless mode run out of the way, I think we're ready to give the Queen of Scales a try. So I'll see you next time on Hand of Fate.